Hi, you guys. All right, so I am sitting at my desk, which is still jacked up from this morning because I have all types of makeup all over. Can you guys see this? It's jacked up from this morning because, yeah, I kind of, you know, my makeup and stuff, whatever. Anyway, that's not important. Um, while I'm cleaning my desk, I figured I would sit here and talk to you guys about a few things. Um, one of them being um, my last video. I'm still kind of, um, I don't know. I feel some type of way about the video because um, I never do videos like that, first of all, ever. You've never seen a video like that come from my channel. And um, I guess I feel some type of way about it, you know, first and foremost, because there was, um, there was footage, I guess I should say, that, um, that was sent to me that I couldn't use, to make a long story short. And so, the video kind of was half done. <laughs> Because I couldn't, I couldn't, it was a sex tape and it had, you know, false prophet Joshua Holmes and it was not alleged information or, you know, something that looked as to be him. It was him filming his own activity and I just... Completely disturbed. Completely disturbed by it because, you know, you claim to be a man of God. You claim to be holy and saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And, you know, you're obviously not because the woman, first of all, why would you film something like that? Second of all, if you did, you know, I would expect it to be with your wife which you shouldn't be doing that kind of crap because the marital bed is undefiled and private and personal. But the thing about it is neither one of these women that you were with was your wife. Now, rumor has it that this was kind of like an orgy type of ordeal that he was with several different women at, you know, the same time and then some people say he was just with several different women on several occasions I was only sent two pieces of evidence okay and both of my pieces of evidence he was with one woman her piece of evidence which means that there were two different occasions of adultery and fornication that I saw with my own eyes and one of the pieces of material it was a very clear that he was in fact filming because he reached for the phone, he fiddled with the phone, he put the phone back in the stand or cradle or whatever and made sure that it was positioned to where, you know, you could get everything. And both times he was positioned behind, you know, the female. And in both cases, you know, he made sure that the female was either looking at the camera or the camera caught the female's face. In which case, a lot of people have speculated the first woman, was that indeed a female or was it a male? Well, we live in 2019. Who knows? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, men can actually go and get female parts and they can go through the whole transition. So you don't know. You don't know. You know, you can't jump to conclusions on this. You don't know. So, you know, one of the females happened to be very attractive, although attractive still was not his wife. 
um, neither one of them had, you know, their own hair, so to pick them out of a crowd or whatever probably would be difficult, so there was a lot of things to be, you know, misconstrued, you know what I mean? And on one hand, no, he did not cover his tracks very well. On the other hand, you know, somebody with a really keen eye could probably pick these women out in of the crowd wherever he's speaking or preaching or prophesying. They're probably members of his flock, probably members of his entourage. On several different occasions on YouTube and Periscope, there seems to be the same woman over and over and over that's a part of his act and this woman keeps getting slain in the spirit you know he'll wave his coat like a magic wand and then he'll turn around in a matrix move every single you know show he does every single show he does and you know that part of the act you know she's always gonna you know pass out she's always got on a wig or a ponytail or something slipped back in the face is always the same. I don't think this woman really wears a lot of makeup, but after seeing the reenactment so many times, literally, you're like, I've seen her before, and you get to know that this is the same woman in the same act over and over. And the clothes are different, and his clothes are different, so you know it's not the same video over and over. I mean, nobody can Photoshop that good. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I've come to the conclusion, because for the last couple of days, it's just been bothering me. And I shouldn't let things bother me that much, I know. But, I mean, this just really... I was sitting in the car the day before yesterday, and I, I got so mad that I was, like, on the verge of tears. I just, like, let it bother me that much. Not the fact that I couldn't use the footage because I don't put porn on my site. And not the fact that... You know, I used to watch this guy and now he's doing this. Nobody's perfect. And people, you don't know, we we don't know how long false prophet uh, Joshua Holmes has been doing any of this stuff. You know, all we know is that he's been preaching since he was about five years old. And at one point in time, there was a possibility, strongly, I do believe that he was real. And I believe that you can get caught up in things. I strongly believe that at some point in time in his life, he got off track. And I believe that, I don't, I, what I don't believe is that he started this whole thing off as a ring to build a cult or build a following or anything of that nature. Because at five years old, you're way too young to, to think about things like that. And I believe that when I caught wind of him and actually started, you know, watching him, I believe that he was still, you know, in the will of God. And he was unaccepting of a lot of the things that he's allowing to happen right now. And even though, and hear me when I say this, because there's a lot of people who allow things to happen in their ministry even though they don't verbally speak it themselves, i.e. Jesus in the flesh. And, you know, if you're a Christian, one thing that you ought to have in your possession is a Bible. And so I've never heard Joshua Holmes say out loud verbally that he is Jesus in the flesh, but I have witnessed a lot of his followers say that he's Jesus in the flesh. I've seen them put it in their profiles on Periscope. I've seen them put it in their profiles on Instagram. I've seen them put it in their profiles on Facebook, you know, from other Facebook, um, uh, I don't know what you call them, Facebook users or whatever. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still broken up from Facebook. I don't know if I'll ever go back to Facebook, um, which does me a disservice because I can't go pro on my Instagram, so I'm still going back and forth with that. If I decide to go back, I'll let you guys know, but I can't, yeah, I can't see it happening anytime soon. But, um, even when I was on Facebook, you know, I, I kind of saw, you know, some shiftiness, not from him, but from the people that follow him, some desperation, 
some, um, what is that, that, that low self-esteem, that a need to belong, it's real, and it's really sad. It's really sad. Just, you know, ne needing something so, so bad that you will sell out. And so if, if you begin to follow the man instead of following Jesus, you know, you will, you will sell out. And it's just really sad that so many people, I, I mean, thousands and thousands of followers on his Periscope and Facebook and not so many on YouTube, not so many here. He, he, pro he has a little over 300 maybe here on YouTube because YouTube people are different. Um, you know, you, YouTube people just can't be fooled really. You know, there are not a lot of YouTube people who are going to gravitate you know, towards him. You know, we look at people with a raised eye, you know, because, you know, we've been fooled before by some people and it's like, you know, are you real? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you catfishing? What's wrong with you? You know, whereas there are other people that are up late in the middle of the night and you're live streaming and, you know, you just kind of, you can, no matter what time of the day or night you're live streaming, you can catch somebody who needs something, you know, and um, when you can't sleep at night and, you know, you're trying to find, you know, something from the Lord or whatever and, you know, all of a sudden you run across this preacher that's up at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, prophesying or preaching or reading the scripture, of course he's going to grab your attention and, you know, if you're that perplexed or if you're that distraught, you're going to buy into whatever he's talking about and it's going to sound good. And my thing is, everything that the Bible says about studying to show yourself approved and about, you know, hiding the word of God in your heart, you know, and, and about, um, you know, just having that whole armor of God and, and, you know, protecting yourself, you know, fleeing from the devil. If you resist the devil, he will flee it's almost like those words don't exist for these people because they're not buying it. They're not listening to any of what God says. If you believe that this man is Jesus reincarnated or Jesus in the flesh, that means that you have completely denied what the Bible said. The Bible says that Jesus is sitting up in heaven with his father, which is God. He's not here yet. The second coming of Christ has not happened because we have not been caught up. If Jesus was here, he would have came and been gone already. And we, if we're, if Jesus had already came and we're still sitting here, that means that we've all been left behind. And that clearly was not my plan. My plan is not to be left behind because I don't want to suffer while I wait for the third coming of Christ. I don't want that. I don't want to wait for, you know, the wrath of fire. I don't, I'm not, that's not my plan. That's not my goal is to be left behind so I can, you know, either be beheaded or accept the mark of the beast and see the world in, in, you know, flame. That is not my, you know, plan at all. That's, that's not where I was trying to go with this at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm in my 40s and, you know, I'm pretty good to live you know, a pretty good, you know, life or whatever. I don't, I don't plan on any of my years being cut short for any reason at all, right? So I'm thinking I'm probably going to, and even if I don't make it to, you know, my dying day and I got to have a funeral, if I am due to get caught up, if he is on his way soon, that's my whole plan. Not that Jesus is down here being disguised and his disguise happens to be false prophet Joshua Holmes. Anyway, I mean, you know, we're talking about Jesus, God's son. Clearly, he can get a better disguise than that. You would think. Just saying. Anyway. Ooh. 
No. I am one of those people who I don't believe that this guy is Jesus in the flesh. I'm very disappointed that he's gotten this far off track. And to film his fornication and his whoremongering and his... Because I do... A whoremonger is a pimp. If you haven't read that in the Bible, that word, that word is in the King James Version of the Bible, Holy Bible, whoremonger. It is not a whore. It's a whoremonger. Meaning... He's, he's a pimp. And so I do think that he is pimping people. So I think he's an adulterer. Uh, he's a fornicator. He's a false prophet. And I'm not calling him names. I'm just... I have researched the Bible to see which personality disorders kind of go with the activity that has been going on. And whoremongering it does fit you know one of his personalities or personality disorders whichever one you want to call it then adultery clearly because he's married with children one child being from the first marriage one child being from the second marriage his current marriage so adultery fornication because if your partner is not married, but you are. That means that somebody is fornicating. The, the unmarried person is fornicating and is in an illegal marriage with you now because you've been inside this person, which means the two shall become one. Hence the Bible. Am I right? If you've read the Bible, then you know this. You can't just be sleeping with people. Sex or unprotected sex protected sex or unprotected sex or whatever you, you just can't be sleeping around and not have a legal piece of paper saying you're married not having a traditional marriage with a witness and in front of God that is adultery and fornication I mean, it's in the scripture. You can read it for yourself. You look it up. You Google everything else. <laughs> I'm sure. If false prophet Holmes can Google and look up and read and research everything else, I'm sure he knows these facts as well. So you've got that. <laughs> the sermons about the money. Everybody gives all of the televangelists and everybody a bad name because they live well and while I was reading the Bible the other day it is a well-known fact that if you work inside the church you are to be paid as such it's in the Bible I read it I've seen documentation of it and you are not to have a job and work inside the church and not be paid by the church it's not of God God asked the question in the Old Testament, how come these people had to leave my church and go outside of the church and work? Why don't they have enough? Why don't they have enough to eat here? Because they work here. So why don't they have enough here? He asked that question. He was bewildered. He was confused. If God can't trust you with the little things, with the obvious things, what makes you think he's going to give you anything bigger? Just, I mean, come on. So, yeah, these people that people are like throwing shade at, I don't know why, because you can read the Bible. They're good stewards, obviously. And, I mean, I just don't get it because my dad has been, you know, pastor of a church for 30 years and I personally don't understand because I see the books um, you know we're not a mega church but we're a big enough church to where you know there are certain rules and standards but at the same time we're a small enough church or I guess just you know a well functioning church to where if somebody says I want to see the books they don't have a problem with it because we don't have two or three sets of books it's just the books and so if you want to know how much money was taken up and how much money is in the bank and how much money is going to what, we have a, a yearly meeting 
and you can see all of that if you want to and if you just want to go in there one day and ask questions you can we have a church secretary for that you know we have stewards for that it's totally fine they're not even going to ask you why you want to know you know because you're like investing into that or whatever so it should be like that for everybody if you want to know where your tithes are going or where your offering is going or where the building fund money is going if you're putting money into it it's kind of like you're investing into that into the ministry you know what i'm saying so you should have full disclosure of that if you if you so wish and so that's the way i'm used to things running however in the case of a minister that's not a pastor but he's an, a prophetess and i think somebody said today or yesterday he was he was calling himself an apostle you know which is like a church planter which i don't know how many churches he's planted or if he's planning on planting churches but when you have um an internet auxiliary such as a ministry and you're taking up money it's kind of hard to determine where the money is going unless you can see evidence and so there's no physical brick and mortar church so the lights aren't being paid and the phone bill isn't being paid so you kind of you're like where is the money going if you know he's not giving you that accountability of what he's doing with the money you know what i'm saying like because he doesn't work an outside job so you know it's like you're kind of paying him, you know, to teach you, which is, you know, it's fine. You know, people do that, you know, when you go to college and stuff and, you know, to bless the man of God is totally fine. It's up to you. You know, the Bible does say to give according to, you know, your heart, what you feel in your heart. So nobody can take that away from you. If that's what you want to do with your pastor or if you go to revival one night and the Lord, you know, puts it on your heart. Or if your heart is just so overfull that you want to give everything in your pocket, that's your business. That's between you and the God you serve. It has nothing to do with anybody else. However, for the people who get hot under the collar about it, you know what I'm saying? Is anybody getting hot under the collar with the new Jim Jones, a.k.a. false prophet Joshua Holmes about this? You know what I'm saying? I am sorry. He is like a new age Jim Jones. He kind of reminds me of like if R. Kelly had a little brother. You know, because this is just like outlandish. But, you know, you guys haven't seen the video. If you, if you, you know, haven't seen video footage or whatever, it's on Instagram. <laughs> but you're not going to see like, you know, full out, you know, body parts or whatever because they have smiley faces over it. But you can see the movement. You can see the activity. And you can clearly see this man's face. So you can see. You can see it. <laughs> you can see it. It. I gotta go. Because I got stuff to do. Um, it's Sunday night. I need to be working in my traveler's notebook. Getting some stuff together for this upcoming week. Because I really do have plans, and I really have plans for this channel, and I really want this channel to grow. And this is probably going to be the last expose I do on somebody. It just disturbed me so much, this story. I didn't even take time to do an intro or an outro or any of that stuff. So listen, <laughs> enough about false prophet homes, alright? I have a wonderful website that I have been diligently working on for you guys and I'm going to talk about that website in my next video because I really want you guys to subscribe and I'm probably going to do a lot of talking about this website on upcoming videos because I'm really proud of the website and it's going to give you guys a lot of things like videos that you won't get here on YouTube and exclusive blogs that would only be available to subscribers and you know different things that you can use in your everyday life and then also one-on-one -on -one time with me if you're a subscriber and the subscription is like so low this year it's only two dollars and 99 cents so this is kind of like a prelude to you know the big picture um so if you want to go check it out please go check out my website um, it's just so much there's so much going on with like people with low self-esteem and, and you know low self or no self-awareness people who need motivation and inspiration and 
people who aren't driven, people who don't have, you know, a sense of self-worth. And all my life, you know, especially when I was younger, I dealt with, you know, depression and low self-esteem because when I was a kid, I was molested. And then later on in life, I was raped and I've been in abusive relationships and, you know, I'm taking everything that I've learned throughout my life and my education and being a certified life coach, going through, you know, everything, trying to find out why I was like I was when it was right in front of my face the whole time. Every time you go through something and you come out, you know, you went through the test to have a testimony. And so I've been rebuilding this website so that it's a tool that has many tools inside of it to help almost every type of person that can actually be hurting from something. If it's church hurt, if your parents hurt you, if you're going through a divorce or you've been through a divorce and you don't know how to get over it, if you lost a child, just, you know, so many different things. Anything that I have personal experience with, you know, I'm trying to help people, you know, move on with their life. I don't want people to just cope anymore because coping leads to alcoholism and drug abuse and suicide. You know, we need a way to get, you know, out of the funk. We need to stop coping with things, with, you know, food addictions and stuff and really get over things and, you know, live a healthy life inside and out. And that's what my website is all about, canhelp.live. And um, I want you guys to check it out. So I'm going to put the link in the description box and I want you guys to go. I mean, $2.99 a month for a website that can really, really help you. And you can start building relationships, you know, with other people inside that, that website. And I mean, I spend way more money than that at Starbucks. And I, once I drink that coffee up out of my cup, it's gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So for $2.99, something that you're not even going to miss, you're not even going to miss $2.99 a month. You're not even going to miss it. It's pennies, you know, and if it's not going to help you, you can pay the subscription and, and give it to someone that who, who does need it. And nobody has to know. You know, if you don't want anybody to know that you're getting help from a professional life coach or you're getting, you know, one-on-ones or you're getting group therapy or whatever, nobody has to know. But it also has a forum and, like I said, it has a blog and, you know, there's so many different things and, in, in, you know, elements. There's a call-in number that you can just call and listen to and nobody even has to know that you're listening because it, it looks like you're just on the phone. And nobody has to know what you're listening to, you know. Um, there are, um, besides blogs and private videos, um, personal testimonies, there are um, podcasts. And I do podcasts on various different um, subjects. And I have a Podbean and I have Anchor and um, Spreaker, which you guys see some of my Spreaker here on YouTube and, you know, many other things. And I really want you guys to subscribe, you know, if you're already here on my YouTube channel, kicking it with me, but if you subscribe to the website, you get to see a more serious side of me, and that's what I'm hoping for, so outside of all of the YouTube and the Periscope and everything and that, you get to see what I really do, and you know, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you guys. I already have met some of you, but I'm looking forward to meeting you know, some of you um, face to face, ear to ear and all that stuff on canhelp.live. So I can't wait for that. And again, I'm going to um, put the link in the description box so you guys can go check it out. Um, it's still being updated, but it's almost done. And when the master classes are um, uploaded, then it's going to just, you're going to just love it. <laughs> you're going to love it even more. Um, so I've been advertising it a little bit on Instagram, but I decided it's time for me to start talking about it here on YouTube. So I'm going to get out of here so you guys can go check my site out and so I can um, 
you know, get off of here and start enjoying the rest of my Sunday evening. Thanks for listening to me just vent about this, you know, weirdness in, um, in the Christian community. And um, you'll be seeing my face more and more. Tell your friends and family about it so that they can subscribe. And don't forget, last but not least, every month I'm doing a YouTube giveaway. You will receive a golden envelope or a gift box in the mail. It's a surprise. I can't tell you what's in there, but it's something different every month. And it's good stuff. So don't forget, you have to be subscribed to this channel in order to um, be entered to win, all right? If you're subscribed, you're already entered to win, and I just um, pick your name, and you have like 24 hours to get back to me, and then if you don't, I just pick somebody else's name. So somebody got last month's golden envelope, and I can't wait, um, you know, to pick again. You know, you have to wait for those 30 days or 31 days or 28 days, but you know when the next person is up it's like so exciting so I can't wait um now I'm gonna get out of here for real I love you guys so much enjoy the rest of your Sunday or whatever day it is enjoy and um I will be back on here with some more manifestation classes some more affirmation training and um we're really gonna do some more things to enrich your life okay Mwah. I love you guys and I will talk to you soon bye guys